So a ball of light tool, which we all know and love, has developed over the years. I looked recently and the very first ball of light image I made was around about 11 years ago, maybe close to 12. I think it was 2009 maybe. Anyway, over the years, the tool has developed and it's morphed a whole lot of different ways up into the configuration that we see today. We, I realized the other day, and I'll talk more about this soon, but I have manufactured 1,100 ball of light tools, which means around about 1,050 of those have gone out to people in the field, which blows my mind. So I want to share with you a really neat story. Around about six years ago, I was at IKEA, which is one of those places that is kind of a light painter's heaven. There's always cool stuff there, different lights and bulbs and bits and pieces. And I was walking through one Christmas and I noticed these, which were probably called a Ilfinsk or something like that. But it was a Christmas decoration that went with a series of lights that they made. And the idea was you could open it up and you could put one of their Christmas lights in here and it would hang. And it would suspend from a series of lights. And I remember seeing them hanging on the wall and looking at them and I could see the light through the, uh, through the decoration. So what I did, is I bought some and I went back to the back to the to the lab and I pulled it apart and I tried to figure out how I could make this into a head because the idea that I had was that when you put a light inside it and it's moving through the frame you would intermittently see the light so what I did is I went back and I opened opened one up and I hacked it apart and basically, this is what I came up with, is something, I think, I pulled these out of the shed today. I keep everything. Does, yep, that, oh, some of it's broken. But as you can see in there, you can see the light coming through the holes. Yeah, they were absolutely incredible. And the effect that I got from them was exactly what I envisaged that day in Ikea. But there were some problems with the tool. The very first one is that they're made of quite a hard, brittle plastic. Now, for any of you that have been have done any orb spinning, you know that it doesn't matter how good you are, uh, myself included, when you're spinning, sometimes your head hits the ground and all sorts of crazy things can happen. Now, the, the ball of light tool, when, and we'll touch on this again in a little bit, the ball of light tool, when it hits the ground, uh, and one of the LED LEDs breaks off, the way that it's wired inside is that the head will keep working. So you could almost, and I've got several where I've got one or two LEDs that are, are broken off, but it still works. So the, I had a, did have a bit of an issue with these, I call them the IKEA heads, where uh, they would hit the ground and they would break. Um, the way the LEDs are mounted in there was, was pretty complicated. And as you can see, I've got duct tape on there to cover the holes. But they were great, but they broke. And weirdly enough, one of the biggest problems with it is that IKEA stopped making and stopped selling them. It took me a long time to find the right thing, buy enough of them to build enough prototypes, go out and test them. Uh, and eventually I got it to work. There's some very neat effects that can happen. Now, you should be able to see here that as the head is traveling through the air, intermittently the camera will see the LEDs and what the effect the effect of that that we get is it looks like the LEDs are blinking they are called softy heads for three reasons and the first reason is is that because this material that this is made out of is a little bit sort of see-through and translucent is as the head is traveling through the image, you get this lovely soft texture in the orb, as well as the sort of sharp dynamic texture and shape of the LEDs. So it is an amazing combination. Now, if you're a beginner to spinning orbs, one of the challenges that you're gonna have, and we always have is this. When you are spinning your orb, for me personally, I love getting as close as I can to the ground. And when you're spinning this, uh, when it gets close to the ground and it hits the ground, uh, the potential is for it to break off some of the LEDs. Um, with the softy head, uh, there is absolutely, <laughs> there is no way you are going to uh, damage this head. 
and that is part of the special manufacturing process that I have developed is that it is so strong here where it joins but also the material that this is made out of uh, it is not going to stop working oh, I don't want to damage my new bench top here but yeah it is super safe so you can be spinning away and you can hit it on the ground and it's not going to break I don't care how good you are at spinning orbs when you start out things get a little wild and when you're spinning these guys with these LEDs, uh, if you crack yourself on the head with it, these LEDs, the thing's traveling at about 100 miles an hour when you're spinning it. If you hit yourself in the head with one of these LEDs, it's going to hurt a lot. If you're spinning away uh, and you whack yourself in the head with this, it absolutely is not going well, okay, it's going to hurt a little bit, but you're not going to injure yourself, right? If you hit yourself with this, it's okay because it's pretty soft. They are absolutely, absolutely robust and to the point, the bit inside here is strong enough that you're not going to damage it. I have absolutely beaten the shit out of these heads now for about two years without any problems. I've also designed it so that you can, uh, you can see here, let me just check make sure so you can see here that as i am rotating the head around inside the color i hope you can see that the color from the led is hitting the head at different places and you can row if you want to do fine adjustments to the way your head looks or the way your orb looks you can adjust you can rotate the internal part of the orb head uh sorry of the head and you can slightly tweak the effect the process of manufacturing all of the heads that we make, including the standard ball of light heads, but especially these, is that it's quite labor intensive. I've recently had to update my 3D printer, and what that's allowed me to do is to manufacture, redesign and manufacture the inside component of this head quite quickly, uh, and it makes the it reduces the time that I have to spend on it quite a bit. So what that means uh, is that basically I'm going to relaunch these uh, with quite a large range and they're going to be the same price as the standard heads, which means that you can, when you buy your ball of light tool, uh, you can select uh, softy heads as well and they'll be the same price. So it's a wonderful product. I, I, like I say, I've been manufacturing these for quite a long time now and there are, gosh, I'd have to say maybe a thousand of these out in the field uh, and they've, they've worked fine and the effect is absolutely beautiful. So um, the softy heads, I'm releasing 12 colors initially. Uh, they'll be up on the website now. Um, I'll show you a bunch of images that I've created with the softy heads over time. I hope you have as much fun with the softy heads as I have uh, and your ball of light tool. Um, let's get into it. Let's get out and start creating. Thank you very much. Cheers and have fun.